240 is certainly an iconic car uh, for a lot of people and it's not really known for its performance characteristics necessarily it's just one of those cars that you know has been around forever because they seem to last forever and and they remind a lot of us of our childhoods you know our parents our friends parents drove one and um, when Alex brought us uh, his with some ideas of what he wanted to do to it um, we were pretty excited to get the chance to work on it so this is a 240 wagon and it certainly didn't look like this when we first got it but so as you can see here it's had a full paint job completed it's got some custom ordered CCW wheels that we spec'd out for it that just barely fit under there. Otherwise, the outside of this thing remains completely factory. That makes this thing one hell of a sleeper, right? I mean, you'd see this thing cruising down the road and while it certainly does kind of, you know, command your attention because it's a long, low, blue station wagon, and it is exceptionally clean for one of these cars. Um, you wouldn't really think much of it, but uh, the main reason that Alex brought us this car was to perform the engine swap. And you get a little hint of what's hiding under the hood there. You can kind of see an intercooler peeking through the mesh in there. So let me show you what we have going on under the hood of this thing. Two JZ. Yep. You might have seen that coming, maybe, maybe not. But this is a uh, VVTi 2JZ that we got from an engine importer. It's got uh, a set of cams and a valve train refresh, new valve seals, new valve springs and retainers, and a set of upgraded camshafts. It's got a Borg Warner S300 turbo, full race manifold, twin turbo smart wastegates plumbed back in because this is a civilized vehicle after all so no wastegate dumps here uh, we had all the valve covers intake manifold and such powder coated just to clean it all up along with all the inner core pipes powder coated to match we installed a Bosch drive-by wire throttle body onto the factory intake manifold uh, we did this so that the car could have uh, working traction control that traction control is all programmed through the MoTeC M130 ECU we supplied and wired into the vehicle. It's got all custom power steering, plumbing, uh, all custom braking parts as well. Everything pretty much has been replaced in that aspect. Uh, fuel injectors from Injector Dynamics with the Radium Auto fuel, fuel rail. Turbo Smart Wastegate. You can see the reservoirs for the JRZ shocks hanging out up here. We'll get to the suspension in a bit. It has a custom triple pass radiator. We had to get an off the shelf radiator that just barely fits in this thing. Even though it's a pretty big car, um, things just barely fitting in it was certainly the, uh, the theme for it. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty jam-packed engine bay, even with the engine stuffed as far back as we could possibly get it. Um, two JZs run inherently hot, and so we fit as much radiator as we could. We even modified it to be a triple pass and got two of the biggest, most powerful spall fans we could fit on here. Of course, most everything was custom made, the downpipe, of course, inner core piping and all of the plumbing, whether it be for fuel system, cooling system, power steering system, everything was custom made for this application. Uh, we had room for a small Miata battery up front here in the factory location. Uh, all of the factory chassis harness uh, still exists, so all of the factory creature comforts are still there, including heat and air conditioning. You can see a AC condenser peeking through there in front of that custom radiator. Inside the car, it is not completely finished yet. It's actually gone off to an upholstery shop uh, now that it is finally leaving our place. 
but I'll show you some of the updates inside of the car here. We installed these Recaro seats with uh, some custom brackets and sliders. We had to add our own clutch pedal there. That was a little tricky, but uh, we got it all fit up in there. It uses a AR5 transmission and it's a five speed and it did not fit in the factory tunnel. So all of this trans tunnel was completely cut open all the way back to facilitate the taller gearbox and clearance for a drive shaft as well. But we did remount the factory handbrake here, as you can see, and it will get a center console put over it to cover it up uh, at the upholstery shop. So in addition to the Motec M130 ECU, we also added a Motec C127 display in a custom little enclosure there. And this just gives us all the vital data we need for the engine. Um, it lets Alex know what he needs to know and even some things he doesn't even need to know. You know, it's just good to have information. And with all the additional sensors we have plumbed in, we have that. Otherwise, uh, all factory uh, converted to black, working on converting all the interior to black. Again, going to an upholstery shop. It's got the R Sport steering wheel and an old period correct JVC tape deck, which is gonna get replaced as well. It'll have a new stereo system installed in it. So once the upholstery and stereo work's done, this car will be, you know, quote unquote finished. So this thing is pretty, pretty sweet. And it is a blast to drive. Let's get it in the shop on a lift so I can show you some more details. Let's start in the front and I'll show you guys the suspension here, again, all replaced with the Planky Racing products. And those are those JRZ two ways with some custom top hats that Ben makes as well. Very trick. It's got these massive Porsche brakes on it. Kind of tough to see up in there, but uh, they are huge. Barely fit in the wheels. They're uh, 17 inch, by the way, these CCWs. Underneath here, you can see our 2J fit just barely, right? All our AC lines kind of cruising through here. Inner core sitting uh, right where we want it. And still plenty of airflow to that radiator because, again, you got to keep that 2J running cool. We've got our AR5 gearbox with some. XRP plumbing, of course, for that clutch line, a hydraulic throwout bearing, and there's a twin plate clutch master's clutch in there as well. A three and a half inch downpipe we made. It's a street car, so it's got a cat, and three and a half inch exhaust all the way back. It has a little oval section right there just to keep the ground clearance good. Come on back, custom drive shaft from our friends at the drive shaft shop. XRP fuel line to a IDF 750 filter. It's another signature move of ours. In the back here, more Kaplinky Racing products, these trailing arms, and the whole three link setup with the pan hard, adjustable pan hard. In the back, use uh, Coney shocks with the Kaplinky Racing Kit. In the diff, we use a Wavetrack limited slip that we installed. And it's just a factory fuel tank with a Bosch fuel pump installed.
that's all we have for you on Alex's 2JZ powered Volvo 240. If you have any questions about this build, feel free to drop them in the comments. Be happy to answer anything I can. And uh, if you're interested in a cool project, feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to help.